What do Elon Musk, Gorilla Poop, and the Great Green Wall of Africa all have in common? I'll give you a hint. On January 21st, 2021, Elon Musk promised $100 million to the best carbon capture technology. That is what I have dedicated the last few years to. Not the $100 million, but the goal of making the best carbon capture technology that will impact as many people as possible. And I found it. That's probably not what you expected. Most people think of fancy machines and unique technology when they think of carbon capture solutions. And yet, the answer is this simple device called the tree made by Mother Nature millions of years ago. Forests are planted all over the world, yet the net loss of forests globally is increasing. In absolute terms, the UN states that the global forest area decreased by 178 million hectares in the past 30 years. That's a bit smaller than the size of Mexico. I am an entrepreneur and a problem solver. My initial thought on mitigating climate change was the same. Let's invent a special machine that will do what we need. And voila, problem solved. That's what I did as an entrepreneur in other fields throughout my career. The high level process is very much the same in all areas. When working on a problem, you first need to identify the problem. In this context, the problem is too much carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. In the next step, you need to come up with a solution, preferably the simplest one. Raise money, execute, fix problems, and repeat. But when I started working on climate change, I got stuck in this process. I simply could not find a simple solution that could be executed at scale. Luckily, around that time, new research came out suggesting that we could mitigate climate change by planting 3 trillion new trees. That sounded like the perfect solution to me. The technology exists. All we have to do is implement it at scale. I gathered other tree enthusiastic people experts from various fields, including climate and forestry. We built a community with a goal of planting trees globally to help in the fight against climate change. Our next step was money. We raised some seed funds and were ready to get started. Our mission was simple, plant as many trees as possible. But how do we do that? We first identified the places that would be most impactful for planting. Unfortunately, the best areas in the world for tree planting are also the poorest and most impoverished ones. Our first few projects were in Uganda and Thailand. We were so happy to see the local species of trees back where they belong, regenerating the forests and supporting the ecosystem conserving biodiversity while mitigating climate change. However, we were concerned that the trees would be taken down at the first sign of crisis, like flooding, drought, recession, or anything that puts survival at the top of the priority list for the community surrounding our planting site. And then what? We have the perfect technology, but it's at risk of being taken apart. Think about providing a rocket to a village in the Amazon rainforest. At a certain point, someone will take that rocket apart and you will find its parts used for shelter, as cooking equipment, or things you did not even imagine it could be used for. This was a big challenge. We were mitigating some of it with periodic checks and reports, but now a simple solution became cumbersome and in a way, forced. Then in early 2019, we planted in a small village in Kenya at an area called Machakos, two and a half hours southeast of Nairobi. What was different to all the previous attempts? This time, we also tried to understand the community's needs. 
and see if planting trees could not just serve the environment, but also the people inhabiting it. We wanted to create some synergy between the people and the trees. This community needed steady income, basic sanitation, and clean water. For steady income, Moringa trees were planted. The leaves and seeds of the Moringa are sold in the market and the community uses the proceeds of the sale. Certainly a small success, but overall, not that different from what we had done before. In parallel to our initiative, two unrelated sanitation projects were added. Clean water stations and composting toilets. Soon enough, the wastewater from every station was channeled to water a tree. And the compost from the composting toilet was used to fertilize a tree. Together, these projects are supporting the community's basic needs, weaving the trees in and providing a better future for the community while mitigating climate change. The perfect synergy. It was the moment we changed where and how we planted that magnified the potential hidden in trees. We realized we have an opportunity to both use the forest as a mechanism for dealing with global warming and at the same time improve the local community's quality of life. Imagine trees that save not just our climate, but also become a global equalizer once they are being planted by people, for people. This is what we believe and what we have done in all our projects since. Let me share some examples. I wasn't just teasing when I mentioned gorilla poop at the beginning. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, in one of Africa's most biodiverse regions, lies the home of endangered gorillas. The gorillas are located in one of the most densely populated human centers in Africa. The human community has placed tremendous pressure on the park's natural resources, affecting the trees and the gorillas. Many people were collecting wood, food and medicinal plants inside the park to satisfy their basic needs. Add illegal logging to this mix and it becomes clear quite quickly that the situation is precarious. So we joined the Ape Tree project started by Dr. Augustine Basabose, which was aimed at restoring the forest while supporting the local community. The Ape Tree project is collecting and analyzing gorilla dung. Guess what was found in it? Tree seeds. Soon enough, this became a simple way to collect the native tree seeds, grow them in nurseries, and later plant them back. The people from the surrounding villages are working on this project, which provides a secure income source. They are there from the smelly beginning all the way to the actual planting. They are enjoying the additional seedlings that are not used in the park, solving their other needs and providing an alternative to taking what they need from the forest, enabling regrowth and survival. Last year alone, more than 11,000 seedlings were produced and planted in this one project, a project that is improving the well-being of families in the region while reforesting key gorilla habitats. We flipped the process. Trees are now directly planted for people, not towards a seemingly distant problem, this gives community a vested interest in the tree's survival rather than their destruction. Obviously, we are not the only one trying to mitigate climate change by planting trees. There is a goal to build a natural wonder of the world across the entire width of Africa. It is called the Great Green Wall. This fantastic and ambitious project, once completed, will be the largest living structure on the planet. 
It's been almost 14 years since it started in 2007. In theory, this area should look like the Amazon rainforest. But so far, it's nowhere near this lofty vision. The majority of trees planted in the region, 80% of them, have died. The sad reality is that despite significant planting in the area, the project is only 15% completed. We were not involved in this project, but we became curious about the 20% of trees that were thriving. What was so special about them? Based on experts' opinion on the project, I have come to realize that the trees were not just considered another technology, but a way of life. In the area in which the trees were thriving, farmers were taught simple water harvesting techniques and ways of protecting trees that did not sacrifice their crops they depended on for food. For many of these communities, food security is the biggest concern. Teaching them the values and methods of agroforestry, which is growing crops around the trees in a system in which both benefit, helped them regenerate their farms naturally and enabled food security. Trees became a crucial part of their farms rather than a bother or a piece of firewood. They're not a strange technology introduced to someone who has no idea what to do with it. They are a way of life. There is one thing I have learned over the last few years. If we only look at trees as a technology for solving climate change, we are missing an incredible opportunity to do something much bigger, to not just protect the planet, but also foster and support the communities that live on it. That require a bit more tailoring based on the needs of the community and setting goals that once achieved will ensure the ultimate goal for our climate and planet. We also need to remember that tree technology is more than just a carbon sequestrator. Trees provide food, shelter, clean water, preserve the soil and much more. I might not be on track for $100 million promised by Elon Musk, but I know that following this path will allow me to have a much bigger impact on the world. One of my favorite moments since I started getting involved in the world of tree planting was seeing a birthday celebration of a composting toilet in Kenya. A year has passed and we harvest the compost from the toilet to be used as nutrients for the trees. The community gathered around to celebrate it. And guess what? They sang happy birthday. This is for me the ultimate goal, seeing the community so immersed in the trees that they become part of it. They are the driving force for a better future. Happy birthday, compost me. Happy birthday, compost me. Happy birthday, compost me. Happy birthday to you. When it comes to planting trees with communities, we need to think globally but act locally. We should consider how we plant and ask ourselves, who do we plant for? Not what do we plant for? Repositioning the tree's role in human's life, not just as a carbon storing technology, but as a force to meet people's daily needs, while at the same time, allowing the community to reconnect to nature, answers this call. Trees are not another rocket or another unique technology. They have a bigger role to play in the grand scheme of things and in our communities. We need to make sure we are not missing it. Thank you.